<laughs> Welcome to the Alpha Male Podcast. Alright men, today is going to be a recast of an older episode about the shotgun. Powerful, manly, and versatile. A couple of reasons for this. A big one is, with the schedule that I have now, it's become difficult to stay on top of podcasts. And I have done something recently that by God's grace soon will let me have a better schedule for podcasting. But I don't want to announce that until I can deliver it. I don't want to be the kind of man that promises something and, and doesn't deliver. So I don't wait till it's certain before I promise you guys anything. But in the interim, I am hiring for a replacement and training a replacement. And things at work have gotten pretty hectic. And already 10 after 10 o'clock at night here. I want to get you guys some content for Monday morning. If you want to skip this one because you've heard it before and just pick it up later this week. But I hope you'll give it a listen because it's been a while since it's been out. And if you've listened for a while, you know I'm big on the shotgun. Not because it's my favorite gun to train with. Not because it looks super cool on Instagram. Because it works. And for a lot of alpha males listening, they didn't grow up in gun culture. They didn't grow up with guns. And they're maybe looking to get their first gun or get into the world of guns. And I think for most people, the shotgun is the best place to start. Not always. I don't know everybody's situation. But if you listen to this podcast, you might better understand why. And another reason for this is a little bit of cross-pollination. You guys probably know that there are other podcasts. Simple Man Sermons, The Flagship, it is what it sounds like. And then Gunfighter Life. And on Gunfighter Life... We're kind of nerding out. In fact, it's calling nerding out on the shotgun. We're shotgun nerd out. Where we're going into deep dives on the shotgun and different aspects of it. And there's a lot to shotguns. If you like this content, you might be like, I like that. I want more of that. And you may check that out on Gunfighter Life. We've, we're already done with part two of that. So you may decide you want to listen to those and subscribe to that podcast as well if you're not already. And I don't think I have to remind anybody looking around that I don't know anybody that would argue that the world right now is becoming a safer, more secure place. So hopefully more men are waking up to the reality that they may have to defend themselves and those they love and those that are weaker than them because that's what alpha males do. So for all those reasons, I hope you enjoy this recast of the Alpha Male Podcast. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and leave a review. Also, check out Good Shepherd Training if you want more of this content. If you want to support the podcast, goodshepherdtraining.com. Today's episode is going to be all about the shotgun. Powerful, versatile, adaptable. Now you can listen to this as a standalone episode, or it goes kind of in a line with the last couple episodes all about what firearms are, why they're important, why you may or may not choose to use one or carry one or have them. Uh, Last episode was about the handguns and all about handguns. The one before that was all about basic firearms nomenclature. So if you want to go back and listen to them, I think you would find it good to listen to them in a line. But if you just want to dig into shotguns, we can do that today too. I am your host, Michael Melito. A little bit about my bio and... Uh, how it pertains to today's episode. First and foremost, I am a Christian. It is first and foremost in my life, and it comes out in everything that I do, hopefully, God willing. And this podcast will be no different. I come at this from a Christian worldview, and I make no apologies for that. A little bit about my background. Uh, joined the Marine Corps at 17. Uh, two combat tours in Iraq. I was in the infantry, so... Uh, combat veteran. After uh, my tours of combat, I was an urban warfare instructor for the Marine Corps for a time. After that, I got out and went to work for LAPD, so law enforcement. Did uh, several years in law enforcement, had some basic, what you call work on a beat, basic patrol assignments, and then uh, I had some more specialized assignments. I've been a firearms instructor since uh, 2005. Uh, I've done it for Government, I've done it for regular citizens, law enforcement, military, 
uh, big firearms background, FBI certified firearms instructor, NRA certified firearms instructor, a bunch of other certifications from other agencies and organizations. Uh, so well versed in the way of the gun. God has been very good to me in that respect. Uh, a lot of competition shooting. Uh, I've been very blessed to win more competitions than I can remember. I am currently still in the armed forces. I won't say which branch because I'm still in and this podcast is not affiliated with that. Also currently working for one of the three-letter government agencies. And there are a bunch. I won't say which one because, like I said, still currently in and not affiliated with this podcast. But still very much involved with firearms. Also with the firearms going way back to before I started my bio, I grew up hunting and shooting in the backwoods of Virginia running around chasing squirrels and rabbits and ducks and deer and bear and everything else. Some of my earliest fondest memories were the shotgun in my hand. Um, so very fitting for today's episode. I shot skeet, shot sporting clays. Um, obviously in law enforcement, uh, especially LAPD, um, always had that shotgun in the car. Every, every patrol car had one. I'm sure it's still that way. So enough about me and my bio and a background with the shotgun. Let's dive into today's episode. And let's learn all about the shotgun. Now a shotgun is the most versatile weapon that you can have. The shotgun is adaptable unlike any other firearm. You can hunt anything in North America with the shotgun. You can hunt a little chipmunk. You can hunt a brown bear and still eat both of those after you shoot them if you choose to. You can use it to dispatch a a pesky rattlesnake. You know, when you come across one, you can use it to protect your family and your home. You can use it to take a dove out of the air. You can use it to stop that angry charging grizzly bear. No other weapon is that adaptable. It's also very powerful. It's more powerful than any other weapon, generally, that you're going to have as an average person. You can get into a crazy 50 BMG, and if you want to buy one, that's cool. You can get into some crazy 500 Smith & Wesson Magnum. But generally, for most people, most of the time, the vast majority, the most powerful gun you're going to have, the most um, power you're going to have is in your shotgun. Generally, a 12-gauge. Most people don't have 10-gauges unless you're doing something specialty, duck hunting or something. But... uh, The 12-gauge shotgun is a formidable weapon and very powerful. And it's also surprisingly affordable compared to most other guns. It is an affordable, adaptable gun for the everyman. Now, firearms are a big part of my life. Praise God, with a Bible and a gun, I can make my way in this world pretty well. I have so far, ever since I was a child. And praise God for that. I do most of my training with a handgun. I do the second most amount of training with a rifle. Way more than I do with a shotgun. But, if you said, and I have some really nice handguns and rifles, but if you said you only get to have one gun, grab one of your weapons, okay, and that's all you're ever going to have. You're going off into the wilderness. We're flying you out to some crazy place and dropping you off. You don't know what's going on. You can only have one gun, it'd be the 12-gauge shotgun. Because it is that versatile. It does put food on the table. In fact, when I go out uh, when I go out into extended periods in the wilderness, like I've done in the past, because uh, I really enjoy it, I'll, I'll grab uh, my Bible, my backpack, and my 12-gauge shotgun. And I've never gone hungry. Sawtooth Wilderness up in northern Idaho or wherever. Let's get into the very basics. I know we covered in the basics episode, but some of you might not have listened to that. I'm not going to go back over all the parts of the cartridge. Uh, We cover metallic cartridges in another episode. But basically, your shotgun shell is going to be the same thing. You have an ignition source, the primer. You have a hull, which can be made out of different things, but generally, it's plastic. It'll be a plastic hull, which is what they call the hull, which is what holds everything together. And it'll have powder in there, and it'll have brass, just like every other cartridge. The only differences are, inside there, there'll be the powder and there'll be what's called the wad. It's like a plastic cup that holds all the shot together. The shot is why it's called a shotgun. The shot is a bunch of little metal, usually lead spheres of different sizes. 
And think about this when you were a kid. Think about picking up a handful of rocks and throwing it. Like when you're trying to hit somebody when they're running and you're having a rock fight because you're a little boy and that's what little boys do. You pick up a handful of rocks and you throw them. And they kind of all go out in one direction and start spreading out. That's what a shotgun does. To dive deeper into that analogy, to break it down, if you picked up a handful of sand and you threw it, it'd be easy to hit something really close up because it would spread out so fast. But it wouldn't be very powerful whatever it hit. If you picked up a little bit bigger rocks and threw them, it'd be good a little bit further out. The bigger the rocks you pick up and throw, the farther they hold their energy. The more mass that object has, the longer it retains that energy, the better it is farther out. Same way with shotguns. Now a shotgun, think of it just like the barrel is like a metal tube, a pipe of whatever diameter. Okay? Now if it just stays straight, if that pipe just goes and stays the same length, like you drop the shotgun shell in there and it's the same diameter as the outside of that shotgun shell and it just stays the same all the way down, okay? After the chamber, it just stays all the way down. That's called an open choke. It's just the same size. The shot just travels down that and goes out. Shotguns have what's called a choke. You may or may not have heard that before. Okay? Think of a choke like a restriction. At the end of that pipe, if you were to kind of crush that pipe down and make it smaller, you would force all those things coming out of that pipe closer together. Uh, an easy way to think about it would be like a hose on a garden, like a garden hose with a brass nozzle. And when you tighten it down, it forces that into a smaller space. Kind of the same thing. A lot of different chokes. Going off the top of my head, from the most open, which is an open choke we talked about, no restriction. You have a skeet choke, improved cylinder, modified, improved modified, full, and extra full. The big ones that you generally see for most shotguns are open okay modified and full and like i said they go in order from the least restrictive to the most constrictive the more constrictive it is the tighter it packs those pellets together the tighter it packs those shot together okay and the further out you can shoot and it's kind of a balancing act you might be thinking well, why don't i just want to shoot as tight as i can all the time well the whole point of the shotgun is you want that shot to kind of spread out if you're shooting at a dove 20 yards away you might want to skeet or improve cylinder choke so that that shot gets pretty spread out so it's easier to hit. Plus you don't want to hit a dove with 400 pellets. You want to hit it with a couple pellets so you want that shot to spread out. Now if you're hunting, um, let's say turkey that tend to be farther away because they have very good eyesight and you're aiming for a small target like the head, you want that, you want that choke to be as constrictive as it can to get as many pellets on that little tiny head as far away as possible. So use a full or an extra full choke. They even have what's called a turkey choke but very constrictive. So it's kind of a balancing act there. What distance are you going to be using it for? What shot size are you going to use? Um, so think about choke as a restriction. And I don't expect you to remember all those, but uh, just remember open is none, modified is kind of in the middle, and full is all the way constricted. And do some research if you decide to buy one, which one's best for you. A lot of shotguns today have removable chokes, so you can actually change those chokes. Now, let's get into shot size. This is what makes the shotgun so versatile. That's why it's called a shotgun, because it fires shot. Shot, um, kind of different than other ammo. Think of it as like ammunition on opposite day, okay? So, the bigger the number, the smaller the size. With regular shot and with buckshot, the bigger the number, the smaller the size. So, some real common ones. Um, seven and a half shot, good for smaller birds. Okay, number six shot is going to be a little bit bigger. Okay, number four is going to be bigger still. Then you get into buckshot. Now remember that the smallest buckshot size is still bigger than the biggest shot size. So it goes all your buckshots, then you move in, I mean, I'm sorry, it goes all your regular shots, then it goes shot sizes, then it goes into all your buckshot. So, same thing, same rule applies though. Um, double op buck is bigger than number four buck, because four is bigger than zero. Zero, zero. Double O buck, which is the most common, is smaller than triple O buck. We get into the very biggest, which is a slug. A slug is when you kind of quasi turn a uh, shotgun back into like a rifle. You're shooting one projectile. Um, it's not really the same. Um, we won't get into that, but think of it like making your shotgun into a more long-range weapon that fires one big heavy projectile. 
for deer, for bear, for some law enforcement applications, for some military applications. It's a big, heavy hunk of lead coming out of that shotgun. So just so you kind of know, if you're going to buy, if you're going to buy shells, what uh, shotguns uh, ammunition is generally called shells. Okay, if you're going to buy shotgun shells, what uh, might you want to get? If you're just going to do practicing uh, shooting skeet, shooting those little clay targets that are in the air, generally you'll do number nine shot, number eight shot, or even seven and a half shot. A uh, very small size shot. That shot is also good for smaller birds, uh, things like snipe, things like dove. Get up into your bigger shot, okay? Your bigger shot, like a number six shot. Six shot is good for squirrels and rabbits and bigger birds like pheasant. You get into your bigger shot, uh, it's kind of confusing, but it goes from numbers and it'll go into letters. So like B and BB and triple B. But your BB sizes are generally good for bigger birds like turkey. If you're moving up to a buck, think about buckshot. It's called buckshot. It's for deer sized game, for something bigger, for something that weighs like 100 pounds or more. You're going to move into the buckshot or slug. Double up buck is kind of your standard, but I'll tell you my favorite is number four buck. You can look into that in the ballistics if you want to and, and nerd out on ballistics. I sure like to, but I will tell you that a number of deer and other animals have gone to the freezer for me with number four buck. Also remember, when you're moving up, when you're getting bigger shot sizes, when you move up, you can fit a lot more small shot into the same size shell as you can fit big shot. So if we're talking about, let's use a 12 gauge as an example, if you're using like seven and a half shot, you're putting several hundred number seven and a half shot for dove hunting. You move up to number, uh, you move up to double alt buck, you're maybe getting eight or nine pellets of double alt buck. So nine versus a couple hundred. So obviously think about any kind of cylinder. Take Think about taking a soda can and cutting the top off and dumping different size rocks in there. If you put a bunch of little rocks in there, a bunch of little pea gravel, you can put a bunch in there. If you get start getting bigger rocks and pebbles, you get even less in there. So the same way with a shotgun shell. Real quick, we'll talk about high brass and low brass. Um, you'll hear that term, high brass, low brass, and magnum. If you look on the on the shotgun shell, on the hull, um, your, your lighter, what they call light loads, or target loads, or for smaller game, generally the brass part, the metal part at the bottom, will be lower to the bottom. It will have less brass on it. The brass pretty much tells you where the powder is. The ones with the high brass, they're called generally referred to as high brass, they obviously have more gunpowder in there, which means they're more powerful. Then you have your magnums, which are pretty much loaded to the max. Um, make sure it'll be stamped on the side of the barrel of the shotgun, what size, what gauge, and what size. Um, shotgun shells also come in different lengths. Make sure that the length that you pick is equivalent and will be compatible with your shotgun. Advice is if you're going to a more powerful round have a reason for it if you're moving to a magnum make sure that you need a magnum because it's going to have a lot more recoil a lot more pushback and if you don't need it like you don't need a magnum shell to hunt doves because doves don't need a lot of killing and it kind of also passed over um waterfowl hunting which is very popular with shotguns and a lot of fun but i wouldn't advise you start there uh the federal government is involved in that because they migrate from state to state and just like anything the federal government gets involved in there's a lot of regulations and a lot of stuff you have to understand. So if you want to get started in hunting with a shotgun, I would advise squirrel and rabbit hunting. Generally a lot simpler and a lot less rules. There's all kinds of restrictions on shot size and what they can be made out of and what birds you have to shoot in the air and what they look like and don't shoot the wrong one or you'll get in trouble. So we'll skip waterfowl hunting for today with a shotgun. Next, we'll get into gauges. Okay, gauges, very important. If you don't know what gauge is, I'm going to give you some of my nerd knowledge on the shotgun here. Like I said, picture that shotgun barrel as just a metal pipe, which is basically what it is. It's just a pipe, okay? If you were to take a lead ball and make it the same size as that pipe and drop it in there so that it was exactly the same diameter and just barely fit down there and rolled down the pipe, However many of those balls it takes to make one pound is what gauge it is. Example, a 12 gauge will take 12 of those balls of that size to equal one pound. A 20 gauge will take 20 of those balls to equal one pound. Hence, a 12 gauge is bigger than a 20 gauge. Hopefully that makes sense. 
There's a lot of different shotgun gauges, 10, 12, 16, 20, 28, and 410. But the big three, the, the big ones, the ones we're really going to spend any time talking about today are the 12 gauge, the 20 gauge, and the 410. 410 is actually not a gauge, it's a bore, but we'll leave that aside. That's a whole nother story. But just, it follows the same lines. It's a bigger number, so smaller in diameter. All right, this is the Alpha Male Podcast. I would advise you, if you're a strong alpha male, to start out with a 12 gauge. Unless, unless, I'm going to get into the other gauges and what they're better for. Unless that really fits you, start out with a 12 gauge. Reasons, it's bigger, it's more powerful, and the ammunition is the cheapest. Even though it's bigger, it's the most ubiquitous, it's the most common, so the ammunition is cheaper. Almost anywhere you go, you're going to find 12 gauge ammo. Since it's so common, it's not that you can't find this stuff in other gauges, but it's easier to find different shell sizes, different uh, different types of loads for different things. It's just easier in a 12 gauge. Just like anything else, they're more common, easier to find parts, easier to get stuff for them. The 12 gauge is what uh, the military uses, both uh, our military, foreign militaries. It's what the police use. They use 12 gauge. It's really the standard. So again, it's big, it's powerful, it's the most common. And because it's a shotgun, unlike other guns, if we can scale it back, we can put a light load, light shot, and still hunt very small game with it. So if you have no other criteria, good place to start with the 12 gauge. Next, we'll get into the 20 gauge. The 20 gauge is less powerful, obviously, and smaller than the 12 gauge. Ammunition is not much more costly than it is for the 12 and it's still, even though it's less powerful than the 12, it's still very powerful. The 20 gauge is still more powerful than most other weapons that you're going to have. Why you might pick a 20 gauge over a 12 gauge? Well, they're smaller. The guns themselves tend to be smaller and lighter. Likewise, the ammunition is smaller and lighter, and that adds up if you're trying to carry a lot of ammunition. So if you're going to be walking long distances, you still want a fairly powerful gun. You still want that powerful gun, but you want it to be a little bit lighter. 20 gauge is really good for that. Like a 20 gauge slug, 20 gauge number four buck is still plenty for taking deer. I've taken plenty of deer with it. Also realize about the shotgun, um, just because you're going from a 12 to a 20, the power of each pellet is still the same. You just get less of them. Let's say that I shoot double up buck out of a 12 gauge and I, I'll, it'll be this, probably the same velocity as it will out of a 20 gauge. So it'll both be going the same amount of feet per second. But the 12, I might get 9 pellets, whereas the 20 gauge, I might get 6 pellets. So you see kind of the difference there. But the velocity is the same. If I'm shooting doves uh, with number 7.5 shot out of a 12 gauge and a 20 gauge, the velocity of the pellets is the same. Each individual pellet has the same amount of power. It's just that the since the 20 gauge is a smaller cylinder, it packs less pellets, if that makes sense. It packs less shot. A 20 gauge slug and a 12 gauge slug generally about the same velocity, but one is lighter, so it has less energy. Uh, another reason uh, you might pick it is if you're not the only one shooting it. You're that big, strong alpha male. You can handle that 12 gauge just fine, but somebody else might be shooting it. A wife, a child. Okay, so they might not want to handle that 12 gauge recoil. It is formidable. Also, it adds up if you're going to be shooting it a lot. Like a dove hunter might shoot a lot in a day. A quail hunter might shoot a lot. And a 20 gauge is plenty for quail and plenty for doves. So you might pick it over that if that's the main reason that you want it. Next, we'll get into the 410. The 410 is quite a bit smaller than the 12 and the 20. It's very much smaller. Like we talked about with the gauge, 410 is not really a gauge. If it was a gauge, it would take 67 of those balls to equal one pound. So think about the size difference there. You can Google the difference between, just Google shotgun shell sizes, and it'll give you a picture that it's quite a bit smaller. So you're getting a lot less pellets. But, uh, like we said with the uh, 20 gauge, the 410 is even much more lighter. So the 410 is a very light gun. Now, the ammunition is also quite a bit lighter. So a lot of the survival guns that are put, like, for pilots or for people at sea or things like that, a lot of those weapons uh, will include a 410 shotgun because it's smaller and lighter, and it's plenty for taking small game. 
even uh I mean, you can still get buckshot in it, and if you get a good, well-placed shot, I, I started hunting with a 410 shotgun, and I hunted deer with a 410 shotgun. So it is powerful enough, but it is quite a bit less powerful than a 20 gauge. Um, where it really shines is, like, for the survival scenarios, for carrying a lot of ammunition, it's quite a bit lighter. Both the gun and the ammo are lighter, and uh, if you're really going to be walking a lot, it really is nice to have a 410. Also, children or or uh, somebody that's really recoil shy, it's got a lot, lot less recoil than does the 20 or the 12 gauge. Um, great for backpacking. Like I said, it's light, so it really shines in that. And it's really good for small game, squirrel, um, things like that. If the animal is stationary, you don't need a lot of pellets if you have a well-placed shot. Much harder to hit a dove out of the air with a 410 than it is with a 12 gauge. But, you know, a squirrel up in a tree, you have time to take that aim shot it really doesn't make a big difference. You can a uh, 410 is a great gun for like squirrel and rabbit hunting. So that is why you might choose one of those over a 12 gauge. Next, we'll talk about actions. Okay, the actions of a shotgun. Okay, the pump is king. It's not even my favorite, but I'll still admit that it's king. Why is it the king? It's solid. It's reliable, and it's relatively cheap. And it gives you a fast rate of fire. It's a very natural, very fast action. It's the one that you most think commonly with the shotgun. You think about somebody shooting it and pumping it or sliding the handle back and forth and you get that sound. That's a pump shotgun. They've been around a long time, over 100 years. They're rock solid. They're very dependable. They're designed to take a lot of punishment, a lot of abuse, a lot of neglect out in saltwater conditions, um... In combat conditions, you look at World War I, we were using pump shotguns. Most police days and cheese that use a shotgun will use a pump shotgun. It is very affordable. So as far as, and it can give you a very quick rate of fire. I mean, it's, it's, you can, it's not ideal, but you can shoot skeet, sporting clays. You can hunt and shoot several birds out of the air with a pump shotgun. It, it has a fast rate of fire. And as far as what you're getting for the money that you spend, it really is the king of the shotgun world. All right, there are some, I don't get into like exact recommendations, but with the shotgun, it's so easy. They've been around so long, there are some that really rule the roost when it comes to good, reliable, good for your money shotguns. The Mossberg 500, um, the 590, and the Maverick 88. The 500 is like the standard, okay? For Mossberg, they're great. They're super reliable. Um... The 590 is kind of like your combat model, your tactical gun, and your Maverick 88 is more of your, um, it's still kind of a Mossberg 500, but it's made a little bit cheaper, so a little bit more affordable, but still a very dependable gun. And then the big rival to that is the Remington 870. I prefer the Remington. I just shoot it better. Both designs are great. I've shot both back to back, side to side. Uh, I like the Mossberg. It's got a lot of stuff going for it, but I personally shoot the 870 better. Um, that may be because that's, you know, that's what LAPD used. That's what I grew up shooting. I have a lot more uh, time with my face on the stock of a Remington than I do on the Mossberg. But you may find for whatever reason that you like the other one. You buy either one of them, I don't think you'd be disappointed. It's really six of one, half a dozen of the other. The Remington 870 is the base model. The base model is the Express. That's the more affordable model. Okay, um, the they also make the police model, which is the more tactical model, and they make the Wingmaster, which is like the high-end, nice, polished, beautiful, and they are beautiful, um, made more for hunting and high-end hunting and just like a fancier, prettier gun. A little bit smoother action. Both, both a basic Mossberg 500 and a Remington Express are going to run you around $300, $350, for, and that's the good, solid, American-made pump shotgun. There are cheaper copies like Chinese copies and copies made in other places. Um, stay away from those. If you can't afford a new one of these and you still want to get a pump gun, try and look for an old used beat up one. I'd put my money, uh, I'd much rather put my money into an old beat up piece of crap looking 870 or 500 that it looked like it had been used and abused and uh, had some rust spots here and there over a brand new Chinese or copy made in Turkey or, or somewhere else.
go to a gun show, go to a pawn shop. Um, they're very common guns. Because of that, you can usually find them older and beat up. And because they're so reliable and the parts are so easy to find, I wouldn't worry about buying one used. You can always send them back to the factory uh, and they'll do a great job on them. You can find them used generally for 150 200 bucks all day long and great. Like for the money and for what you get and the versatility, you really can't beat the amount that you get for the money in a, in a good pump shotgun. There are other great ones that I probably didn't mention. Winchester makes a good one. Benelli makes a really good pump gun that's only marginally more expensive, but a great gun. The Novas and the Supernovas are great. So really, if you're new to shotguns, you're looking for that versatile weapon. Um, anything from, like I said, hunting doves to home defense to hunting deer. You want the do-it-all gun. Um, really, the pump shotgun is unless, and we'll get into the unless, just like the 12-gauge. Start with the 12-gauge, start with the pump. Unless one of these other criteria really meets you. All right, the next one, the single shot, the most simple of the shotguns. It is very simple machine. Basically, this is the one you think about where you crack it open. It has one barrel. You crack it open. You put one shell in. You close it, okay? You fire that shotgun shell. You have to take it out or it'll kick it out. And when you break the shotgun open, you put another shell in and close it. Obviously, that sounds like a pretty laborious process, and it is. Not that it can't be done quickly, but generally it's a one-shot, it's a, it's a single-shot shotgun. It's called a single shot for a reason. You get one shot. So why might you choose this one? Well, one, it's cheap. So it's a very cheap weapon. You could walk into a Walmart, if you're listening to this United States, and most states, unless you live in one of those more oppressive states, and with a $100 bill... And you could get a good break action single shot shotgun and walk out and have money left over with that hundred dollars. Okay, so you could they can be had for a hundred dollars or less. I think uh, last time I was in Walmart they had them in four ten, twelve, and twenty gauge, and they were like seventy nine bucks. So I mean, if you really don't have the money for a pump, I would say you know unless there's some reason you need it right now, you just are getting ready for a hundred. You really want to get started or whatever save up for another month or two or sell something useless like an xbox or whatever that you have and save up the money to get a pump shotgun but if you really can't afford it get that single shot shotgun even if you decide you want something better later they're so cheap you just keep it and then if you want to introduce a buddy to shooting hey you want to come shoot some sporting clays you want to shoot some clay targets out of the air i'll bring my better shotgun you can bring my original single shot shotgun and there you have it because you load the round directly into the barrel, they tend to be a little bit shorter, okay? So that might be an advantage. They're a little bit shorter. Um, the big advantage is that they're cheap. They're also, if you get the ones with the hammer, you can get them with a hammer and a safety, so they're very safe. You can look at the gun and see if it's broken open that is not able to be fired. So a lot of people start their children on a single-shot break-action shotgun because you break it open, you can tell there's no shell in it, you can look at it, and you can tell that it can't be fired until you close it. And it's pretty loud when you close it. So um, very safe. Generally, you have to close it and cock the hammer um, on a lot of them. So pretty safe gun. So for children or for the money, you might choose a single shot shotgun. Next, you'll have the double barrels. Okay, the double barrels are great. I have one. I think the picture I'll post is of... A shotgun that's very dear to me. It's been in the family a long time. Belonged to my grandfather. It is over 100 years old. It's an old A.H. Fox double barrel, like the one you think of Elmer Fudd using and hunting on TV. Looks just like that, okay? Double barrels come in over and under. General use for sporting purposes, like sporting clays or upland bird hunting, doves, and higher end like that. You think of your old school double barrel, um, very intimidating. The barrels are side by side. Okay, both are great. Generally, the double barrels that are side-by-side side use more for your old-school hunting, your rabbit hunting, stuff like that. You just want the nostalgia of it. Okay, they're both great. Both great guns. Um, you get two shots instead of the one, um, so that's a big advantage there. The big disadvantage is that they cost a lot of money. A good double-barrel shotgun, either over and under, even just like a decent one is going to cost you, you know, up to and close to a thousand dollars and it's not hard to get up to ones that cost uh five ten fifteen twenty thousand dollars okay so you're talking a lot of money so really unless you want it just because you want that ruger red label to go out and and do this with or do that with and you know why you want it then i would really say not for you for the beginner unless you already have one that's great or it was handed down to you but 
you only get two shots, and they cost a lot more than a pump action. It generally costs more than a semi-auto, which we'll get into later. Uh, the big plus is they balance really well. So if you want that dedicated, like, people that shoot sporting clays and skeet, uh, that kind of thing, that really want the best advantage, you want to compete, they want the best balancing shotgun, that's them. And they do that, and they balance beautifully, and they're great. I love mine. Um, when I come to just taking out and just enjoyably walking around in the field hunting, I love my double barrel. But they are very expensive, so I would say stay away from those unless you really want to get into that world. Next, my personal favorite, the semi-auto. Why do work if you don't have to? The semi-auto loads itself. Okay, you load the shotgun up, you pull the trigger, the recoil, uh, the gas, or the actual inertia from the shell will push that action open. Kick the old shell out and grab a new one from the magazine tube. Okay, and bam, there you have it. You're ready to go again. As fast as you can pull that trigger, that weapon will fire. Now, a lot of police agencies use the pump, but a lot of them in the military also use the uh, semi-auto. A lot of police agencies and military use semi-auto shotguns. It's my personal favorite. It is faster. They are very smooth. The difference is they do cost more. Not as much as a double barrel, but for a good, reliable, and they can be very, very reliable. A good, reliable... Um, Semi-auto is going to set you back in money. My Benelli is worth about two grand. Um, and the Benelli, in my opinion, is just the epitome of good, reliable semi-automatic shotguns. Beretta also makes some really good ones. But again, you're looking at a grand. Or more. Maybe $1,500 um, for just a good, reliable one. You can get Mossberg makes some cheaper, fairly reliable um, semi-autos. The 930 is really the cheaper one that you're going to find on a budget, but it's still, you can still buy several pumps or single shots for what that's going to cost you. So unless you really want the semi-auto, okay, I, I would steer towards the pump. But the semi-autos are great if you want a good, reliable, um, do-it-all shotgun. Um, the Remington 1100 is kind of the benchmark for that. The old Browning Auto A5, if you want to look those up, those are cool guns. Um, my personal favorite, the Benelli's, uh, the Benelli M series, M whatever. They're great. They're all great. Uh, the Berettas, and that's a semi-auto. It is faster. They can be even more reliable than a pump because um, you don't have to worry about somebody having human error and short-stroking it or whatever. They're very reliable, but they do cost more. So unless you really uh, um, have a good reason to move to the semi-auto, I would stick with the pump. Even though I have a really nice Benelli uh, semi-auto and a really nice double barrel, um, if I'm going somewhere really going to beat up a gun, um, I have an old used Remington 870 that shoots beautifully. I bought it used at a pawn shop. I repainted it, put some Duracoat on it. I think I'm into that gun 150 bucks, and I've beat the crap out of that thing. Spray painted it several times. thing runs like a champ. If I'm going out in the rain or the mud or if I'm throwing it in the back of my truck, I'm um, going to let it get beat around. I'm um, going to let somebody borrow it. That... that it really, that pump shotgun is, is the king of shotguns. So I would, 12-gauge pump shotgun, Mossberg 500, Remington 870, that's where I'd say to get started, unless you have another reason. If you can get it with removable chokes, cool. If you can only get it with a modified choke or, you know, improved cylinder choke, that's fine. Uh, I would stay away from the full choke unless you really want it for some reason. There are other actions, um... I don't know if anybody still makes one, but there was a time when uh, bolt-action shotguns, like a bolt-action rifle, were fairly common. My first shotgun was actually a bolt-action 410. Um, a lot of times at gun shows or pawn shops, you can pick those things up for 75 bucks or less, especially because they've been beat up. I mean, they were meant for hunting. And for that price, they're not quite as fast as a pump, but they're still pretty fast to load. So if you're really on a budget and you don't want the single shot, or you're looking for something cheap that has a higher rate of fire then you can find those old beat up bolt actions all right we'll talk of one more a uh, couple quick things here when we close out on shotguns uh tactical you hear this tactical shotgun well what makes a shotgun a tactical shotgun it's really just a name the big difference between your regular hunting shotguns or your do-it-all shotguns and your tactical shotguns generally have a shorter barrel they're better for maneuvering around inside tight spaces like inside a house inside a room so shorter barrel Generally, they'll have no choke. They'll have just an open choke. You can find them. Um, the ones we had in LAPD had a modified choke. But most of the time, they're going to have that open choke so the shot spreads out faster than it usually does. 
um, and a hunting shotgun. Generally, they'll have a longer magazine tube so you can fit more rounds in there. Generally, for most like pump shotguns, um, when you get them, they have they hold five rounds. A lot of times, if it's a good, and I would recommend any good tactical shotgun, um, get the one with the good sights, like a good ghost ring sight, a good set of rifle sights on the shotgun, because they're meant to be aimed. So more precise sighting on the on the tactical shotgun. Here's what I want you to understand about the shotgun, the tactical versus the all-around shotgun or the hunting shotgun. A round of double aught buck, okay, a regular uh, round of double aught buck like you'd use to hunt deer with, coming out of a tactical shotgun and coming out of a hunting shotgun, coming out of a tactical 870 or coming out of a hunting 870 are going to do the same thing. The hunting one might get a little bit more velocity because the barrel's longer, more powder burns, but for all intents and purposes, that same shell coming out of either gun is going to do the exact same thing. Not that you can't shoot birds out of the air with a tactical shotgun, not that you can't um, do other stuff with a tactical shotgun, but it's more it's not as versatile as the hunting shotgun or the all-around shotgun. A cool thing about the shotgun is most like the 500 or the 870, the pump shotguns or the semi-autos, there's just a cap on the front. You can unscrew it and the barrel just comes right off. So if you get a regular shotgun, especially a common one, you can usually get that tactical barrel and you can do both. You can have a specialty tactical barrel for another 100 120 bucks, or you can have that full-length hunting barrel and you're not out a whole bunch of money. Like I said, the shotgun is very versatile, so think about that. I would start off with the all-around shotgun because it can do everything, and if you want a more specific one uh, for tactical stuff, get the tactical barrel later. Another cool thing about the shotgun that makes it versatile is that since that barrel comes off so easy on a lot of shotguns or like your single shots or double barrels, they have a little thing underneath and you hit that button and they come apart. So basically any shotgun, most shotguns will break in half. So you can store them in half the space under the seat of the truck if you just want it there in case you want to go hunting one day and you want it to fit in a small space. Or if you're traveling and you want it to not get stolen because when you check it in when you fly, you can fly with guns, you got to check them in. Um, that's another topic for another day. Okay, when you do that, you can fit it into a smaller container so it doesn't look like a gun case. Okay, so big advantages there. Like I said, shotgun, very versatile. Other things, versatility that a shotgun can do that I didn't mention, uh, they make the less than lethal rounds. The old school is rock salt, literally like the stuff you put on the driveway in the winter, and it's less than lethal. Generally, everything is considered deadly force, but if you really don't want to have to, like, if you want to shoot a dog or something that is requires deadly force, but you really don't want to kill it, you know, old school rock salt. They also have what's called beanbag loads. We use those in law enforcement. Civilians can buy them. Just like a beanbag when you're a kid and you throw it, just picture you throw it like Superman, super, super fast. And it just, it, they can still kill you, especially if you shoot somebody in the head with it. But they are a less lethal option that you don't have with other firearms like a handgun or a rifle. They also have flare rounds that you can shoot out of them in case you're lost in the wilderness, um, lost at sea. You can put a flare round in there and shoot it out, just like a flare and a flare gun. So pretty versatile. All right, so um, I said where to start. Um, like we, like I've covered already in this episode, and like I covered in the other episodes. If you're looking to get started with a shotgun, um, you know, if you don't have really a lot of money, you can two hundred bucks. You can go down to Walmart. Um, or whatever big box store equivalent you want to use, uh, get that single shot shotgun, get, you know, 100 rounds. I usually make my own ammunition, so I haven't bought rounds in a while, but I think for 25 bucks you can get 100 rounds of 12 gauge or 20 gauge, about that same price, single shot shotgun. Uh, get a box of slugs, get a box of buckshot. Super versatile, your setup. Uh, for under 200 bucks, you get a cleaning kit, and you're under 200 bucks for the whole package. And you can start hunting, you can start the world of shooting, learn how to handle a gun safely, cleaning. So that's a good place to start. For 400 bucks, you can step up to a nice brand new pump and get the same amount of ammunition and a cleaning kit. Um, so really good places to start. The, the any really, I've never seen an unreliable single shot break action shotgun. And like I said, stick with the Remington or the Mossberg or something like that. Um, 500 or the 870 for a pump gun and you're really for a couple hundred bucks you're really set up real quick I'll end with uh, myths of the shotgun they have a lot of myths around them and misinformation a big one is you don't have to aim a shotgun you absolutely do have to aim a shotgun one it's negligent to shoot a weapon that you're not aiming 
Number two, go out and try and shoot a dove or a squirrel and not aim and see how that works out for you. It also works in the tactical world. Think about um, those rocks when you pick them up when you're a kid and you throw them. The further they go away from you, the more they spread out. But in typical tactical scenarios like inside a house or a hallway or something, you take that shotgun out to the range and shoot it. Um, you're talking, you know, inside of, you know, 30 feet or so, it's going to be the size of your fist. If you have to aim it just like a handgun or a rifle, it has to be aimed. You will miss. Shotguns have to be aimed. Another big myth is, uh, you just have to rack the shotgun, the pump shotgun, the sound of that gun racking will just make everybody pee their pants. Well, I know firsthand from law enforcement that is absolutely a myth. Um, you're dealing with somebody on all kinds of drugs, on meth or PCP that broke into your house they don't know what planet they're on, let alone what the sound of a shotgun sounds like. It may or may not work, but don't count on it to work. There are some people that are just so out of it or so on some kind of controlled substance that no matter what sound you make, they're not going to register with them. So don't count on that. All right, so that pretty much wraps up the shotgun. I hope that it was educational and informative, and I hope that this is broadening your world and your understanding of guns and firearms and why and what and everything about guns. I hope this has inspired you, if you already own a shotgun, to uh, dust it off, take it out, and go hunt some rabbits. Uh, go go do some, just for fun, shooting on some clay targets. Like I broke out my grandpa's old shotgun this week and just took it out just for the fun of it. Um, or if you don't have a shotgun and you're really thinking, I want to get started in the world of firearms, hopefully this inspired you and you won't feel like such a... Uh, a newbie when you go to the store you'll kind of know what you want you'll kind of know what you're looking for and you'll kind of understand looking at shells and looking at chokes and it'll kind of make more sense so you won't you know you'll have a little bit better understanding i hope that it has really inspired you thanks for listening to the alpha male podcast if you liked it please share it shall share it with your fellow man help us all to be more knowledgeable just like god gave me this knowledge i pass it on to you i hope that you freely pass it on to those around you all right, men. I hope that you enjoyed that recast. I hope you notice a difference in the audio quality, and I thank all the patrons for all their support to make this podcast better. If you don't know, for years I did this just out of my own pocket, at a loss. People actually approached me, someone approached me and said, can we support the podcast? And I thought if somebody's willing to support it, I should put more effort into it. And I went from doing it a couple of times a year to doing it hopefully a couple of times a week and upping the audio quality and things like that. And I hope to continue to grow like that. And that's only possible if there are some alpha males out there that are willing to step up and support. Again, if you want to do that, check out goodshepherdtraining.com. If you don't want to give financially, don't feel guilty about it, but I would encourage you to like, subscribe, leave a review of the podcast. And if you're not already, I would encourage you to consider being armed as an alpha male. With that, man, I want to say thanks for listening and have a blessed day.